we're seeing that first slide, it might be a little slow to load on your end. Oh, super. Yep, there it is. Okay. Well, by introduction, my name is Stephen Baer. Um, I'm one of the founders and managing partners of the game agency. I oversee all creative uh, here. And we have had a, a long-standing relationship with the American College of Chess Physicians uh, and my co-presenter, uh, Christina, who will introduce herself. Um, we've had the pleasure of working with her on this particular project and look forward to walking you through it. Christina? Yeah, thanks, Stephen. My name is Christina Lorenzo, and I am a senior e-learning instructional designer at the American College of Chess Physicians. I'm really excited to present Dr. Neb today. So, chess, um, let's talk about first, let's, let's talk about chess. Uh, it's a specialty medical society that provides continuing medical education to practicing clinicians and doctors in the fields of pulmonary, sleep, and critical care medicine. As an instructional designer, one of my goals is to design our education to be both timely and engaging for our doctors. And that actually often translates to building innovative, really fun game-based learning activities like Dr. Nab. So to build a game experience like this, we start the process just like any other instructional design process. And that's with identifying knowledge gaps and defining the learning objectives. So for Dr. Neb, new guidelines on a lung disease called COPD were just released, and our goal was to get these out to our doctors as fast as possible and get them up to speed on the new guidelines and ensure that they are able to apply them to their unique patients in clinic. So from there, we profiled our learner audience to identify the best learning modality and for the Dr. Neb game, our learners were the pulmonologists. On a deeper dive, we see that our learners treat complex patients. They work very long hours and also telemedicine now, are naturally high performers, and they really must stay current on an exponential amount of information, including these guidelines that are changing every few years. This combination means that they actually have a short attention span and really less time for learning. But fortunately, all these qualities can be embraced and matched using game-based learning, which simultaneously reduces the stress and burnout among our doctors that you're hearing about in the news today. So for Dr. Neb, we knew that we wanted to leverage game-based learning for these reasons, and we decided to partner up with the game agency and Steven and his team to customize one of their off-the-shelf templates called Scenarios. Scenarios allows us to capture the unique patient stories in a simulated experience where the learner's in the shoes of a doctor and they have a series of conversations with two different patients. Each, each patient's story unfolds over multiple doctor's visits and the learner gets to practice their soft skills and chooses how they want to move the conversation with their patient forward by selecting the next piece of dialogue, which you can see here in the blue banners. One of the questions that came up uh, in the chat is about the graphics. So this is something that we collaborate on together. Uh, the game agency has a variety of illustrators uh, that worked on these character um, illustrations and environment illustrations. And we really work together with Chess to identify not only um, who the audience is and what the content is, but what visual style will appeal to them most. And I think that's really important. There are thousands of ways to go, and we felt like this was the right balance of identifying a visual style that would engage the user, um, feel like you're separate from your current day-to-day, -day, uh, allow you to dive in, uh, and really participate and get lost a little bit in these particular scenarios. Each of these scenarios were also designed not just to be visually appealing, but also to be bite-sized. We really wanted everything to be small, digestible, um, and really to go, going back to what Christina said on the previous slide, something that uh, someone who has a short attention span could really digest and get through. Last but not least, and I think this is probably the most important, is we wanted the user experience to be fun. We wanted it to be something that was realistic. We wanted it to be something that people could relate to, but we wanted it to be fun and engaging and somewhere that people could try out different things and potentially fail, uh, learn from their mistakes, and succeed in the real world. 
one of the things that we think about a lot, and this is something that I, our teams really, I think, enjoyed working on this project together in particular, is what does that storyline look like? So there, in my mind, there are uh, many things that go into a very successful game-based learning experience. Uh, some of it is making sure that the content is excellent, making sure that the visuals are excellent, making sure that um, it's an engaging experience. But if you start here with the content, you have to write it uh, so that, one, it is realistic, uh, it is something that it's relatable, um, but it also gives the user some choices. So we, I'm showing you here two, or we're showing you here two different path options that you can do. There are tons of different path options that you can do as you're building out branching paths. The one on the left is the one that we often do not recommend. Uh, and I want to kind of differentiate the two. The one on the left gives you a, a variety of options from a learner perspective of different routes you can go. And the reason that we don't go this direction often is that one, from an instructor standpoint, it's very difficult uh, and complicated to write. Um, also, from a learner perspective, you can get lost down a path and find it difficult to return to where you're going. So Christina's going to walk you through the one on the right, because this is where we ended up going. And I think that not only did it take the content, but it also uh, drove the learner in a particular direction with choice. Christina? Yeah, exactly. So for Dr. Neb, we really needed to prioritize releasing this game quickly to our doctors. So again, they could start practicing these guidelines right away. And this meant that we needed to compress the timeline for developing the scripts for each patient's story within the game. So to do so, we chose a parallel branching structure seen here on the right side, where the learners all start at a shared point, and that's circled in that, that maroon circle. Then based upon their decisions, they go down parallel paths, which are circled here in blue. These paths all converge at a key learning point in orange, which will tie back to content and the guidelines that we wanted to highlight. Now these key learning points uh, what's important uh, for the parallel paths to all converge here is that we want to ensure that no matter what path you go down, you don't miss that learning point. And so that's why we have them all deconverge there. Now to rapidly write the branching script, we, had to, we decided to first draft those starting points and then the shared key learning points. From there, we were able to more simply uh, write the script in the parallel path afterwards. We also cut down on the headache of those infinite endings in the left side by having each chapter have a single ending. And really, all these modifications to branching allowed us to rapidly develop this game in about three months while still having that choose your own adventure feel through those parallel paths. Someone is asking whether uh, they can have access to this slide, the previous slide about branching paths. Absolutely. And we have a lot more information on that that we're happy to share. Um, so I think that when you think about a strong instructional design experience, and certainly a gamified learning experience, the content and the storyline is critical. It is by far the most important part. But wrapping it around with gamification elements, I think, is equally critical for several reasons. So what are gamification elements? Uh, the first thing is we, we use points and we use meters. So points is obviously just a, um, a show, showing of one success. Meters equally so, right? And meters can be you've uh, you know completed everything or what you're seeing here on the right-hand side uh, is a toggle, unsatisfactory to satisfactory. In some cases, it may be one meter or three or four or five meters. Um, but you want to be able to show that someone is going down potentially an optimal path. Uh, you want to keep them motivated to keep going. Um, points and, and meters certainly accomplish that. But probably just as importantly, when you think about e extrinsic motivation uh, and status, uh, leaderboards are critical as well. And we, we, one of the things we really focus on is leveraging data to understand um, how, what, A, what do people know, and B, as a player, how is my status in comparison to my peers? And so that is, a, all those things when it comes to gamification are really critical. Also, just you know, one of the questions that come up often is the uh, tools that, that we use. Um, we use the Training Arcade, which is a, a proprietary platform that we have at the, the game agency. It is something that people can subscribe to. Happy to give you more information about that. Everything is HTML5 based, um, and we use Adobe Creative Suite um, you know, for uh, creation of all assets. 
Great. So Dr. Deb was actually played. We had it hosted on a touchscreen monitors at our live conferences. Um, as well as on a mobile device. And Dr. Neb, with the results, it's been played by about 465 doctors. Um, each one's played about an average of 1.5 sessions per player, which again, short attention spans, not surprised. Um, and during chess live conferences, the game received really high marks for being engaging, relevant to their daily practice, and improving performance at work. Additionally, in the graph here, you can see that 43% of the players rated the game as above average and 27% as excellent. And more than 90% of the players actually preferred learning through gaming as opposed to traditional lecture format. So we also received some critical feedback that's going to help us as we continue to expand our games. Um, we, we received feedback on how to really improve this experience. And that would be why, by widening the scope of cases to include more player characters, and that's like the respiratory therapists and nurses, and also including more advanced levels with more difficult, complicated patient stories, especially in COPD, where there's multiple levels of severity in the disease site. All these things are pretty doable uh, for our next phase of Dr. Neb given that we, again, chose to follow that simplified parallel branching path to write our scripts. Another thing is, like I mentioned, we, need, we had a compressed timeline for this. So we weren't, unfortunately, able to include voiceover. And we hope for phase two that we're really going to increase the richness of these stories by providing some audio for each character in the story. Also, beyond Dr. Neb, we have continued to really deconstruct some methods and practices that occur in clinic by our doctors and try to convert those into game-based learning experiences. For example, we're partnering with the game agency to build a completely new template called Detective that focuses on a clinician going through a patient's case story and matching it to suspected diagnoses to uncover the ultimate suspect that final diagnosis. 